do you uh, read travel recommendations online? Like TripAdvisor, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I do. TripAdvisor, I look TripAdvisor for restaurants or hotel. Uh. TripAdvisors okay. and stuff like that. I trust TripAdvisor a lot. TripAdvisor. We look at TripAdvisor. 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 So TripAdvisor, they're always... TripAdvisor, TripAdvisor. yeah. TripAdvisor. Okay. Or TripAdvisor, yeah. TripAdvisor. Yep. Yeah, we use that one. TripAdvisor, most of the time. We look at TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor uses it a lot. TripAdvisor? Mm -hmm. TripAdvisor, I think, yes. TripAdvisor. Yep, to figure TripAdvisor. Out yep. Restaurants. TripAdvisor as well. Do you trust travel recommendations you read online? No, I don't trust them. Allora, eccoci qua. Eh, prima di chiamare sul palco Elena di, di TripAdvisor, eh, avete visto le interviste che abbiamo fatto ai turisti per, per strada. Sono state interviste realizzate a Venezia, Roma e Firenze da alcune delle nostre truppe che poi abbiamo montato. E indubbiamente dedicare un intero panel a TripAdvisor è molto, è molto importante perché il 100%, vi assicuro, di quei turisti ha menzionato il sito, quindi in questo momento stiamo parlando di un, di un sito che è, è sulla bocca di tutti come la prossima nuova potenza e forse minaccia anche per Booking, per dominare il mondo del turismo online. Siamo andati negli Stati Uniti alla Focus Flight Conference e eh, dopo il keynote di Elena che ci presenterà dei dati che in Italia non si sono mai visti, io non l'ho visto, quindi adesso, adesso lo, lo vedremo insieme, c'è l'intervista che abbiamo fatto negli Stati Uniti, io e Philip Wolf, a Steve Kaufer, fondatore e CEO di TripAdvisor, che parlerà di tantissime cose, eh, ci racconterà della, de, di quando hanno fondato il sito e, e poi risponderà ad alcune mie domande. Quindi le, le domande sono riservate direttamente a Steve Kaufer ed è la fonte massima per quanto riguarda TripAdvisor. Un bel applauso per Helena Egan. Hi, Elena. It's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. It's very hard because I can't really see you. Um, and I've been told to stay here, so if I move around a lot and you can't see me, just shout. So what I wanted to do today is talk about a little bit about the scale of TripAdvisor and why is the site so important for the industry. I want to give some statistics around Italy and talk about how Italy is researched reviewed some statistics on different regions and how they pair with one another. Then I want to move into reviews, how we moderate the reviews and the importance what they have to your bottom line. And finally, I've been asked by Giancarlo to talk about um, our efforts on the sustainable tourism and talk about our Green Leaders product. So I know you see a lot of figures from TripAdvisor, but I think one of the key figures is the number two. If you think in an estimated one in 16 people online visited TripAdvisor in July 2014, we get 150 contributions a minute. That's a vast, vast volume. I've been with the company for six years, and believe me, these numbers were very different back in the day when I joined in 2008. Brad's already obviously told you about the domains and the languages we exist. This is an independent research that came out in UK last week. Um, it's going to be publicly presented. Aha, I moved wrong, thank you. <laughs> I really have to stay here. So um, um, this is an independent research uh, in, that made in UK and looking at everything that people look online and what they trust. So you see sites like Mumsnet, so new mums to chat to one another and I presume buy baby clothes. Um, you have the Instagram, you have LinkedIn and different Amazon. 
and the highest up came TripAdvisor as what the UK consumers really trust when they read online reviews. This is very powerful and we love the third party research where we have nothing to do with it and we, we get given this to us. So I want to talk about Italy. So Italy is actually fourth largest uh, TripAdvisor using country, just after US, China and UK. So we have over 6.4 6 million people um, coming to TripAdvisor every month. We have quarter of a million of, um, of Italian, Italian companies, businesses listed. And the average rating is really high. If you look at the accommodations, that's fantastic. That's 4.2 out of possible five. Restaurants a little lower and attractions beautiful. I mean, you have amazing attractions and museums, no wonder. So then we wanted to talk about how the Italians, so this is a focus right study on, on Italian visitors on TripAdvisor. So 64 of the respondents use TripAdvisor once a week, which means I'm going to show you figures versus domestic research and international later, and this really is powerful. Um, you can read the rest, but I think key thing is 62% of the Italian respondents ignore extreme comments. Both ways, extreme good, extreme bad. When Italians are looking at hotels, you can see there's a vast volume there that, um, that really finds the importance. But in restaurants, this is the key. 75% always usually reference TripAdvisor reviews when researching a restaurant. And this is largest in any country polled worldwide. That's huge, and we're really excited working with Pipe together and, and um, uh, with the restaurant businesses. And you can see almost 40% avoid eating in restaurants that do not have any reviews. And 56 will not book, book hotels. So this is your market, this is Italian market. We'll talk about global figures a bit later on. Then we ask about the businesses. How important is TripAdvisor actually for the businesses? And 95% business owners think online reviews are very important in generating bookings. What Italian business owners believe to have biggest impact on their traveler bookings is online reviews. They use TripAdvisor more than any other channel to, to uh, market their property. And then when you go into social media, TripAdvisor is the second one that they use. And if you think of all the platforms in the world, there are so many free options. I'm sure most of you who are hoteliers or restaurateurs or attraction owners here are aware that it's one of the rarest sites, I think, in the world who offers so many free options. And we talk about the importance of, of various pieces of your content a bit later on. Then we look at the top Italian regions who have the highest review scores. So if you look at accommodations, and this is all level accommodations, Trentino, Altadice, Valle d'Aosta and Basilicata were the top ones. Then we looked at the uh, attraction scores, and Tuscany was the second, Basilicata the first, and Campania and Lazio the third. And this is quite interesting research, so we've got a later on at the, at the focus hall, we've got a destination and, and trip um, instant booking session at the focus hall, trip advisor hall, and Joseph Rotangelo is going to be there who can talk if there's any destinations here, a little bit more about research that we can do for destinations. So who is looking at Italy? Like I said, your domestic market is very important for you. 68% of the researches that hit Italian content on TripAdvisor come from Italian IPs. So these, these are people who are traveling domestically or going to restaurants domestically. And then when you look at the international audience, US, UK, France, Germany, I would think the top ones are not surprising, but it's fantastic to see Australia, Canada, and Russia being the top international markets who are looking at Italy. So obviously we, we don't have conversion on our side, we just know these people are consistently coming to TripAdvisor to research your country. One of the interesting facts uh, we, we brought up about a month ago is who has the biggest, well, where's the biggest interest growing? And long haul is really key for Italy. I did a presentation two weeks ago in Spain talking about where the Chinese market dreams of going, and Italy was one of the top markets um, for them as well. And you can see here they come up as third. So if you look at the sort of the top four, Long haul is going to be big, big, big market for you. So just you know, think about your marketing, your website, your languages. Just that's where the volume is going to be coming from in the future, and that's really where you want to concentrate your efforts. Then we looked at when the global traveler is looking at Italy, and whilst they're staying on TripAdvisor, what are the next destinations? 
and the next destination is United States. When you turn this around, you know that US market is your biggest international market, so obviously they're dreaming of coming to Italy and then they look at their own destination. But then they look at France, they look at United Kingdom, Germany, you've got Australia, China and Brazil. So sometimes thinking that Italy competes with Spain, Greece and Turkey can be actually a little bit short-sighted. If you look at sort of the global audience, they're really exploring the whole world and Italy stands competition with, with a lot of the long-haul destinations. International cities, when people looked at any Italian city on TripAdvisor, what did they look at next? And the interesting thing with this is we can, we can break this down per IP, so we can really start looking at when the Americans are researching Italy, what are they looking at next on city level and country level. So this is looking at the whole global audience. And I think this is interesting. Number four is New York City. That's fantastic. So I think in Italian cities, you, can, you really see you competing in a global level. So I'm going to talk about reviews, and I know it's a big question for everyone. So I'm just going to show some material today that we haven't actually shown before, and really explaining how we work with, with review um, detection and, and how many people we have combating inte uh, integrity issues. So the people who, who review on TripAdvisor, they do it because they want to feel as part of the community. They want to help other travelers. So we recognize our top contributors. So if you look at, um, there are two kind of different levels obviously, but all these different badges we're now giving to the reviewers, they love it. A lot of people actually when they do, um, if they are destination experts or top reviewers, they use that when they, in their CVs, they use that as a talking point um, because it's, it's a big thing for them. They feel like they're actually helping people. When you get a helpful vote, it's really interesting. We also sent emails to the people who review so they can see how many people have read the review. And then who wrote the review? So some people ask about the anonymity. I hate that word. I'm a Finn. I have a really hard time saying that in English. Anonymity. Uh, close. Brett can come here and say anonymity every time I have to say that. Um, so this kind of answers that question. You can really look at who, where that person is from, how old that person is, their favorite cities, how many contributions, also what with level of contributions they have given, and which cities they visited. And you can actually look at a nice graph of the reviewer as well, so you can see where they've been. And you can start, as a traveler, you can start comparing yourself to them. If that person's gone to a lot of destinations that you would like to go, that person normally travels with the family. If that person starts having trends like yourself, so you can easily follow them. Obviously, uh, Brett mentioned briefly, we have a new personalization feature as well on TripAdvisor, and we have new instant booking and so on, but Steve Kaufer, who's our CEO and founder, will be answering a lot of those questions in the great interview that Giancarlo did, um, did in, uh, in Focus Right. So, let me talk about who's reviewing Italy. Who's the most positive about Italy? So the Americans and the Maltese are the most positive about your country. The Israelis, Canadians and Brits rate you very highly as well. And I like this one, because Russia is a very interesting and, and interesting market. There's a lot of talk about Google earlier, and as you may know, Google doesn't really feature that much in the searches in, in Russia, so it's all about Yandex. And it's a very tricky market, language-wise and so on. I, I grew, grew up by Russia, so I know. So this is a great growth for Italy from the Russian market, and that's a big well done, I think, for, for you, because everyone's after this market. So review moderation. Content moderation is a vital thing for sites like TripAdvisor. I mean, in 14 years, we have become the world's largest site. We have 190 million reviews, 350 million unique users every month. If, I, if we don't take our content integrity seriously, we don't have a site. We have to have reliable information. We actually wrote the book on online fraud detection. Our content team is, comprises of, of 250 employees. We have subunits as customer support, content integrity, we have an investigations team, and we have our listings team. These teams are located around the globe, and as our site exists in 28 languages, so does our fraud team, content integration team. Um, so what happens when a review comes to TripAdvisor? You know when it comes in, it doesn't get published immediately. A lot of things happen in between. So it goes to automated review processing and it has a massive amount of filters. Can't give you the exact number, but I tell you it's a massive amount of filters. 
Then three things happen. Automated process doesn't notify, n identify anything, and it gets published. Second is there's possibly some issues in there, and it will be reviewed by an analyst, so one of those 250 people. And the third one is the automated uh, process rejects the review, and it doesn't need any more investigation. It doesn't go up on the site. And after all of these, if the analyst gets involved, that's their final decision. However, as you know, our community is extremely passionate, and that's why people write reviews in TripAdvisor, because they want to belong into this community, because they find that it's helpful for them and they want to help. They have the option to, so businesses and travelers, have the extra option to say, violates guidelines, is suspicious, it's in wrong location. There's so many options to, to report things back for us. And I know uh, we don't always respond in 24 hours, but that is definitely our aim. Uh, the volume is growing very, very fast, and, and we do our best to respond as fast as possible. Why are the reviews so important? We ran a research uh, this July, looking at the top 25 cities research on TripAdvisor in the world. And what was the most important factor for the traveler engagement? Photos, reviews, management responses, and the number of reviews in the past year. All of this is absolutely free for you to influence as an accommodation restaurant or attraction owner. You can put as many photos as you want up there, you can attract more reviews, and you certainly should be responding to reviews. And why should you? If there are hotel, uh, accommodations with no management response at all, the average review rating is much lower. And what does this mean? Do you want to ha have a higher rating? Does the higher rating help you? It indeed does. So hotels provide a management response are 21% more likely to pursue a booking inquiry by a TripAdvisor. And 50% of their reviews, uh, sorry, properties that respond to over 50% of their reviews. And it's never too late to start responding. People do read the old reviews as well, but it's never too late to start responding. Likelihood of using booking inquiry by 24%. And if you think the volume on, on the site constantly, these, this is if you just manage your reputation on sites like TripAdvisor, and everywhere online when you're present, it's really vital to do that. And it's free, just takes a bit of time. So I know I said this, if the price is the same, almost four times more likely to book a hotel with a higher review score, and they also are willing to pay more for a property with a higher review score. So it's really worthwhile working with these reviews. Bottom line, reviews really matter. 96 of global hoteliers say reviews are influential in generating bookings. And the travelers are the really important one for you, 89%. I'm very quickly going to talk about our Queen Leaders um, product. I don't know how many are, I can't see any hands anyway, and I, don't, I'll, I, I won't steal the clapping thing. That was fun. I'll, I'll use that in another conference. So Clean Leaders um, program is for accommodations. So if you think over 6 billion people travel domestically, and tourist accommodations accounts for more than 1% of global CO2 emissions. This is from the World um, Travel Organization. Hotels have a larger environmental impact than similar sized non-hotel buildings. So the impact is really huge. Can you actually? Oh, you can. I, I can only see half of the text, so I should know my slides. So the way we built this, we built this per country. We started in US uh, and expanded into Canada and Europe recently, and also Australia and New Zealand. We work together with each country. We work together with people like UNEP and Energy Star and four or five other companies. There's an online survey that's built per country, completely free for any accommodation to take part in. We have different levels of green leaders. We also use uh, independent auditors who go around and, and visit hotels. And um, yeah, as I said, it's absolutely free. People can now search on TripAdvisor based on uh, green filters or based on green hotels. The property itself, and there's a lot of BNBs, by the way, who have our Green Leaders badge. So the property itself will also have a badge. It's searchable on the geo listing and also on a hotel listing. So it's really visible for the travelers. But does it really matter? So we have a, our Green Leaders director from US who's actually writing a PhD about how much do consumers actually care about green travel and sustainable travel. Everyone thinks it's nice, but are they willing to pay more for it? And how much do they know about it? And interestingly enough, it still is the towels, it still is the linen, it still is the things that they see. 
and very few actually pay attention to the rest of the things. So the key thing to, to mention is somewhere on your property, your accommodation, highlight your green practices. Because the consumers are not there to ask. If they see that, they will talk about it. And this was a really interesting fact. Um, when the comment mentioned that there was organic or locally sourced food, um, in, I was actually in Pavia at the, at the restaurant, outside Pavia in the countryside a couple of years ago, and everything came one kilometer away from that restaurant. Everything that we ate, it was in a countryside. And it was stunning, and everyone, this was, um, I think, UNWTO conference, and everyone talked about it. And it's one of those things, this is what makes people feel better, but equally, they will re review you higher. So if your hotel restaurant stayed somewhere that is sustainable or organic or local food, it's very important for the travelers. So all of these things can really help you to, to get better presence. So I have no idea how I'm doing with time, but this is my last slide. So um, really the key takeaways is manage your reputation online on all the sites where your content is, because it's normally absolutely free. And this is, you know, where the vast majority of travelers will go to search their information. Italy is having amazing interest from global travelers and long haul interest is growing very, very fast. So have a think how approachable your products are from, from these travelers. Green institutes that are interactive are most notified. And I think one of the things I normally say, and it's, it's a bit fluffy, but honestly, every time, even when I walked into, into, into my hotel yesterday, the moment when you, even when you're on business travel, that is the experience. That's when your experience really starts. You walk in and everything that happens within that experience is what you're going to be sharing. So sometimes I feel like it's, it's so vital to remind your staff that we work in the best industry in the world. It's the most fun industry and it's, it's where people come and we had a research, um, our global chip barometer, um, I think it was last May, where 89% of people said they would actually not go out and drink or go out for dinner if they can afford one holiday. 89% of people willing to give up their kind of weekly luxuries as long as they can go and do that one holiday. And really you are all there to, to, to make the holiday best, best possible holiday for them. And that's what they're going to share. So I'm going to thank you very much, everyone. I hope I did not speak too fast. Thank you, Elena. That thank was you. wonderful. So uh, now we have uh, the interview that we have recorded at uh, the Focus Cry conference. I wish to thank Philip Wolf for organizing this because it's not easy to have an interview no. with Steve. <laughs> So you will see some answers that he, he, he has gave us in uh, some of the questions and some of the issues about TripAdvisor. It's, you don't need an headphones, non avete bisogno della cuffia perché è sottotitolata l'intervista a Steve Kaufer. Avanti, grazie.